Hi guys, it is a gorgeous, over-the-top, beautiful spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization uh, with the birds singing and the pomegranate tree blooming and we won't talk about the cottonwood tree. <clears throat> anyway, I am Sam Mitchell and this is my little co-pilot Sancho Panza and we are getting back to re our regularly scheduled business on this channel which is called Collapse Chronicles, where we uh, chronicle the collapse of civilization and more importantly, the collapse of the planet. So uh, this is just going to be kind of a, is the word pronounced primer or primer for people just coming down in this rabbit hole? So if you've been down in this rabbit hole, you probably uh, will think this is pretty much kindergarten stuff. But I do have to remember that we do have new folks joining us. So I had the pleasure yesterday of, uh, of speaking uh, with this fellow, John Hewson, who is chairman of this new committee, mostly based out there in Australia, called the Commission for the Human Future. And they have just released a 38-page Today, I believe, is the kickoff of this 38-page primer slash primer on the collapse of a planet titled Surviving and Thriving in the 21st Century, a discussion and call to action on global catastrophic risks. So what the, uh, what the folks down there in Australia have done it, is they have come up with the 10 in their roundtable discussion uh, of ecologists, everyone from ecologists to economists to climatologists to biologists got together to figure out what are the 10 biggest <clears throat> catastrophic risks facing this planet and uh, this has the sound of Julian Cribb all over it, of science writer Julian Cribb, who I've had the pleasure of uh, interviewing three times here on Collapse Chronicles. My guess is, is that Julian was the main author of this document, but that's just an educated guess. So anyway, guys, I'm going to put the link to this 38-page document and uh, encourage you to read it while... I don't quite agree with some of the hopium uh, when we get to the solutions to all of these that have no solution, but they sure get it right uh, at the beginning in the challenge, talking about the 10 risks. Now, uh, John told me yesterday that these were in no particular order, that all 10 of these risks are completely intertwined. There is no way to parse out one of these risks, you know, standing alone. You, it, it is the interconnections of all of these systemic, uh, all of these systems uh, that you got to keep in mind. So, just in no particular order, uh, we're going to look. Uh, we're going to look at these, and this would take me probably, anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to read everything it says. Uh, so, uh, we're, going to, we're going to start off with a nod to Book Hermit. Number one, again, not prioritized, climate change. Climate change is primarily driven by the emissions of greenhouse gases from the combustion of fossil fuels and clearing of land. Yes. These gases are altering the energy balance of our Earth system, with many serious changes to the entire Earth from our past emissions. The immediate challenge is to prevent matters becoming far worse and to adapt to those impacts that cannot be avoided. <clears throat> there are several drivers of climate change, including population, meaning overpopulation, which we will get to eventually down this list, 
including population, consumption, short-termism, parochialism, power imbalances, corruption, and poor governance. Consequently, inertia in climate action is widespread both at national and individual levels. Denial of climate science, can we say book her of it, whether motivated by ignorance or self-interest, remains a grave barrier to human safety. We need to build a much higher level of both government and community response to these challenges than we have seen thus far. Okay, now I do think that book hermit would give a, a serious nod to number two, which I think, book hermit, don't you put this as number one, or do you agree with me that overpopulation belongs number one? But anyway, number two, in no particular order, environmental decline and extinction. Growing evidence suggests that human changes to the Earth's environment are driving our planet's sixth great extension and are now so profound that we are entering the third stage of evolution of life on Earth, or devolution as the case may be. The global degradation of biodiversity is truly staggering and planetary in scale. The Earth's terrestrial vegetation has halved over human history, losing one-fifth of this realm's original biodiversity. Up to 70% of the Earth's land service surface has been altered by humans. Uh, I would put that much higher than 70%. Some 700 animal and 600 plant extinctions have been recorded, and many more have likely gone extinct unnoticed. I, I need to do a video sometime about this, the, the, this uh, people talking about how 200 species of spe 200 species are going extinct every day. So that means in three days, uh, three and a half days, uh, 700, uh, anyway, okay. If you're not aware of this, ah, shit, the wind's coming up. Uh, little dog, you get a pass. I gotta put a wind break behind uh, this microphone. Alright, let's see if that helps with the noise. The wind is, looks like some storm clouds on the horizon. Imagine that. Since 1970, 60% of all land animals, we're not just talking 60% of the number of species, we're talking 60% of the total number of our fellow earthlings walking the planet. Uh, in 1970 have been obliterated off the face of the planet by humans and that number is rapidly escalating in Africa today but we're not going to go there because we are at Collapse Chronicles. <clears throat> anyway, at least one million species are facing extinction out of a probable Earth total of around 8 million. Wild animals today are less than one quarter of their biomass before human civilization arose. Uh, so just the, this, the weight of, of all of our fellow earthlings is uh, we have obliterated by weight more than three quarters of every one of our fellow earthlings since we became civilized. Most of the world's present nature protection and recovery targets are on track for failure. Yes, uh, ecosystem services and the species that provide them are declining globally. Globally, our ecological footprint means that we now consume 
five times the regenerative capacity of the earth to provide the goods and services we use each year. This is not sustainable either for humans or for nature and the ecosystems which support them on this planet. Uh, anyway, they keep going with that, but I think we get it. So let's look at nuclear weapons. We're going to uh, the, the wild card in the deck. Nuclear weapons pose the greatest immediate threat to human health and welfare. They have the capacity to destroy the human future in an afternoon unless nuclear weapons are eliminated they will be used again. There are 13,890 nuclear weapons in the global stockpile. Yes, around 2,000 of those are on hair trigger high alert for immediate use. Detonating less than 1% of this arsenal would cause an abrupt ice age and global famine affecting everyone. The danger of nuclear war is growing. In 2020, earlier this year, the hands of the doomsday clock were moved to 100 seconds to midnight, closer to global disaster than we have ever been. The hard-won agreements that constrained nuclear proliferation are being dismantled, arms and technology races are ratcheting up, and explicit nuclear threats are escalating. Yes, arms makers are recruiting the best and brightest young minds to help build more devastating weaponry. Yes, and they go on from there, but I think we get it. Uh, all right, what is next on the list? How about resource scarcity? Is this number four? <clears throat> Which they start out with the population. Resource scarcity. The human population, now about 7.7 .7 billion, is forecast to reach 10 billion in the 2050s and 11 billion by 2100, leading to spiraling consumption, degradation, and wastage of overstretched resources. <clears throat> Total human demand for resources has increased 40-fold. 40-fold in the past 120 years and is likely to redouble again by the mid-century. And this is what, you know, Tim Garrett was talking about in my interview with him. There is no way, there is no way that it can double again by mid-century. It ain't going to happen. There is going, that something has to give uh, for example, while the human population has tripled since the middle of the 20th century, our demand for water has grown sixfold. Currently, our annual consumption includes 3.8 trillion tons of fresh water. 1.7 billion tons of mineral construction and energy products, 5.8 billion tons of forest products, and 5 billion tons of food. Yes, only a very small portion of this is recycled or reused. Total waste production is estimated at 10 to 11 billion tons per year. Yes, if everyone lived at U.S. or Australian living standards, we would not need 1.75 times as many planets. We would need five planets to satisfy, satisfy our combined 
human demands. Yes, yet all of these issues, blah, 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 uh, suffer a low priority among both governments and civil societies around the world. Yes, overall the performance is far below what is necessary for human civilization to survive and flourish in the longer term and to avoid the scarcities and harms that will inevitably arise from our extract pollute waste system. Okay, uh, I'm do do they ever okay they put po overpopulation down near the bottom. I guess we will eventually get to overpopulation. Uh, somewhere on their list of the top ten threats to uh, this planet, at some point we're going to get to the O word, but first we're going to move on to food insecurity. Global food security is on a knife edge due to massive soil loss, growing water scarcity, ecosystem decline, and climate change. Everybody needs to eat every day. History shows that if they don't, wars break out. Wow. <clears throat> the Spanish have a saying that, quote, there were only seven meals between civilization and anarchy. Food is at the heart of all the catastrophic threats. It connects them all. Two-thirds of the wars fought in the last 100 years originated in disputes over food, land, and water. Already a third of a billion people are moving from insecure to more secure regions of the world every year. Uh, and, and take a wild guess what that means. Uh, then, they, of course, they talk about the food waste, blah, blah, blah. All this means our conventional food system is failing. It will be unable to feed 10 billion people on a hot, resource-stressed planet. Yes. Uh, okay, I think we get it. Okay, and as we work our way down deeper and deeper in the list, wondering where overpopulation comes up, although John kept insisting that you can structure this in your own list. I should have structured it to lead off with overpopulation. But we're going to talk about all these dangerous new technologies being one of the Big Ten. A wide array of advanced technologies is having a profound effect on the planet and all life on it, including our own. These range from chemical pollutants to radioactive nuclides and plastics to intangible but real threats such as artificial intelligence, robot killing machine biotechnology, nanotechnology and electromagnetic radiation that are entirely new to our Earth system and may potentially alter the evolution of life on the planet. Digital technologies like artificial intelligence contribute to many catastrophic risks. Yes, uh, machine learning is being used to manipulate elections or increase resource consumption. Big tech is increasing inequality and creating a digital divide within society. And don't forget facial recognition software, data mining, AI and quantum computing are all being used to spy on, manipulate, and control populations. 
Yes. Uh, none of these technologies are being adequately overseen by society or sufficiently governed by regulation in the public interest. All are capable, if misused, of making other risks even worse. Yes, I think we get it. Okay, I do not believe it. We have reached overpopulation. Huh, imagine that, overpopulation finally making it on the list as one of the 10 biggest catastrophic risks to the planet in the 21st century. In 2020, the global population will reach 7.77 billion. We're going to hit triple sevens this year at an annual growth rate of just over 1%. Populations growing at 1% per year double every 70 years without a decline in growth to zero and below, the human population would exceed 15 billion by 2090. Luckily, the, great, uh, the rate of growth has been easing, and UN's medium population projection for 2100 is 10.9 billion, which is 42% higher than our current numbers. Yes. However, concerns about the aging population are now leading many governments to promote growth in birth rates, giving all these baby bonuses. Exponential growth in both population and consumption was inevitably going to lead at some point to a crisis uh, in human affairs. Such concerns have been raised repeatedly. And then he goes through some of those, all of which have been ignored as the global community constructed an economic system of perverse incentives guaranteed to ensure its own destruction. There are now too many people on the planet using too many resources and producing too many risky waste. Human population growth at current levels exacerbates all the other threats. Its seriousness and governability are not being addressed in any country or internationally. The key question is how can we slow both population growth and its impact in ways that can enable our survival and prosperity for all? Lowering the human birth rate voluntarily is surely better than the alternative of massive dieback or the slaughter of billions of people in their prime. Yes, okay, I think we get it. I am glad to see overpopulation making it on the list near the bottom. Okay, a few more. How about universal pollution by chemicals? The number, variety, and volumes of chemicals produced by humankind has risen exponentially since the beginning of the 20th century. Chemicals are now found in the air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink, in mother's milk, and in wildlife in the most remote parts of the planet. Many of these chemicals are relatively stable and long-lasting and can accumulate in animal and human tissues. Humanity releases between 120 to 220 billion tons of chemically reactive substances every year. 
Yes, this is three to five times more than our climate emissions. These emissions are cumulative. Very few people have any idea of the scale or impact of our combined emissions on human health or the stability of life on Earth. There is increasing evidence that this chemical outpouring poses a risk to human existence. Okay, and we cannot forget our good friend, pandemic disease. Yes, uh, pandemic diseases generally arise in the first place as a consequence of human overpopulation, destruction of forests and the wild, wor wild world, increased trade in wild animals, farming practices, international transport, and dense urban living conditions. All of these issues must be addressed to limit their risks. Uh, and this is the only time, obviously, they have to mention the C word. The C word pandemic highlights the devastating combination of an intertwined global economy, unpreparedness, belated action, social disconnection, and hyper-individualism. Yes, okay. Uh, are, we, are we at number 10? Uh, okay, number 10, which uh, is just kind of the backdrop uh, bringing these all together. Denial, misinformation, and failure to act preventively. <clears throat> Faced with constant and growing global evidence of catastrophic droughts, fires, floods, <coughs> storms, and rising seas, people other than book hermit can no longer delude themselves that climate change is not happening. This same applies to all the catastrophic risks. Well, people can 100% clearly delude themselves that any of this is happening. So uh, I need to uh, debate the round table just a little bit. There is a need to galvanize people everywhere to come together to debate, design, and implement innovative strategies to transition to a sustainable world and to avoid bequeathing an environmental and societal catastrophe to future generations. I think that is pretty much the end of the Big Ten. Is it, uh, yes. Uh, that is the Big Ten. And then, of course, uh, they get, uh, we start looking uh, at what we're going to do about this as what our species does about these 10 existential threats in the next few years will determine whether present and future generations face a safe, sustainable, and prosperous future or the prospect of collapse and even extinction. And so you can go on here and uh, listen to my interview with John Hewson where he, after, after that barrage of what we are up against, 
John Hewson is going to try to convince you. He failed to convince me. Maybe he will convince you that there's a damn thing, A, that we can do about it, and B, even if there is anything we could do about it, whether we are going to do about it. The answer to my those two questions for me is we're, we cannot do anything about it, and if we could, we are not going to do anything about it. So uh, you might as well get out there and enjoy what is left of this planet while you still can. That is the only thing to do about it. But uh, keep out there and keep on fighting. Keep up the good fight, folks. But I have to... Uh, what do, oh, oh no, I just remembered I have an interview with John Zerzan. Uh, Sam Mitchell will be interviewing John Zerzan. Uh, I got to get ready for this interview uh, to celebrate two years of Collapse Chronicles on May 3rd. Uh, we get to hear what John Zerzan uh, has to say about the collapse of global industrial civilization. But do listen to my interview with, uh, with John Hewson uh, talking about this new study, which will be the last interview of year number two here at Collapse Chronicles. And if you enjoyed what uh, this report had to tell you, Please spend a few seconds thumbing this video up, and by all means, subscribe while you're over here, and get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Bye, guys.